Channel 11 News starts with breaking news. Breaking right now in the last 90 minutes, Vice President Mike Pence arrived in western Pennsylvania to kick off a nationwide policy tour. Channel 11 was there when Air Force Two touched down at Pittsburgh International Airport. Thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. I'm Jennifer Tomasek. The Vice President has a packed schedule today. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman has more on his arrival and the goal of his visit. Well, Air Force Two just touched down here at the airport about an hour ago. Today, Vice President Mike Pence is kicking off a nationwide tour that starts right here in Western PA. Now, take a look at this. This is video of Air Force Two landing this morning at the air refueling wing of Pittsburgh's International Airport. And then we saw the Vice President get in the motorcade to begin his tour in Pittsburgh. Here's the plan for today. He will be participating in a listening session with faith and community leaders at Covenant Church. Then he will have lunch at a local restaurant. And after that, tour Oberg Industries in Buffalo Township in Butler County to highlight the reopening of America. Now, this is part of the Great American Comeback Tour that is taking place nationwide. According to a news release, the tour will include special guests from the Trump administration, along with federal, state, and local elected officials and private sector experts. The focus is on policies that will drive America's economic recovery following the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, we will have full coverage of his visit tonight at 5. Reporting at the airport, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. Meanwhile, we just got a statement from Joe Biden's campaign on Pence's visit. It says in part, it's an insult to Pennsylvanians that Vice President Pence is using Pittsburgh as a prop on the cynically titled Great American Comeback Tour because had the Trump-Pence administration not bungled the response to the coronavirus pandemic so dramatically, there wouldn't be a need for such an enormous comeback. Smoke came pouring out of a Churchill home during a fire this morning. We have this live on the morning show this morning where we watched firefighters poking holes in the roof trying to get to the fire. It happened on Ridgewood Drive around 6.30 this morning. Officials think there are people who live in the house, but so far we haven't heard about anybody being hurt. State police are investigating a deadly crash on I-70 in Washington County. A truck driver was killed just after 1 o'clock this morning when his tractor trailer went over the hillside. This was right near the I-79 exit ramp heading south. County Hazmat was on the scene too because the truck was leaking diesel fuel. The coroner is now working to notify family members before he releases the victim's name. And we have a tragic update to bring you. The man who was pulled from a swimming pool in Westmoreland County yesterday has died. Our partners at the Trib say that 50-year-old Jason Kokonik was found yesterday face down in the four-foot deep pool in Jacobs Creek. Police say that he suffered some kind of medical emergency while in the water. First responders got him out. They did CPR, but sadly he died at the hospital. Now to severe weather team 11 coverage. You are looking live at downtown Pittsburgh with plenty of sunshine and comfortable temperatures. Severe weather team 11 meteorologist Stephanie Allison is at home to tell us about this picture perfect day and looking ahead to the weekend. Good afternoon, Jennifer, and it is just fantastic outside. That's right. This afternoon is going to continue to be beautiful. Look out of the tower cam. The sun is shining. You can see the trees moving a little bit of a breeze out there. That breeze will stay with us and dew points. This is why it's so lovely outside. Comfortable dew points. We're going to continue to see those dew points drop as we head throughout the afternoon hours. Yes, it's a few degrees warmer right now than yesterday, but the dew points make all the difference. As you can see across the area, dew points in the lower 50s, and we're going to continue to see those fall this afternoon. Look at these marks warming us up to the upper 70s this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. So if you're getting outside, grab the sunglasses and don't forget to apply the sunscreen. A look at the beautiful afternoon and evening ahead, plus your weekend forecast in the next 15 minutes. Stephanie sounds good. Governor Tom Wolf says he plans to take action to help mend race relations in Pennsylvania. He is focused on improving relationships with law enforcement. The governor plans to sign an executive order that includes reviewing and training and the education of police officers. He is also creating a state law enforcement advisory commission to review allegations of police misconduct. Governor Wolf also said he supports legislative reforms, including creating a special prosecutor for deadly force cases and improving access to police videos. Attorney General Josh Shapiro is also pushing for change. He is optimistic about creating a database to track police officers' disciplinary history. The death of George Floyd sparked efforts to create it. It would keep tabs on things like excessive force. Shapiro says the database has statewide support from the State Troopers Association, Pittsburgh Police Chief Scott Schubert, and the District Attorneys Association. This can improve the quality of police departments all across Pennsylvania. This can root out those who shouldn't be wearing a uniform. 
Shapiro said the database will be named in memory of Antoine Rose. He was shot and killed two years ago while running from a traffic stop in East Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will not tolerate racism. That is the message from Mayor Bill Peduto. He put out a lengthy statement about the death of George Floyd in the Black Lives Matter movement. Mayor Peduto said, when people in our city fear our civil servants and officers, we're not protecting all of our neighbors. What we have now is the power to use policy to build up our black neighbors and give them the opportunities they've been historically denied. Peduto added, your voice is important and necessary to rebuilding. You can find the entire statement right now on WPXI.com. Two black journalists at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette are still not being allowed to cover protests. And now the Newspaper Guild of Pittsburgh is demanding that the paper reverse its decision. Alexis Johnson and Michael Santiago spoke out about the situation during a Zoom event last night. Johnson was removed after sending this tweet showing the aftermath of a Kenny Chesney concert in comparison to looters. The newspaper said it showed bias. I had no idea that they were going to take me off of this protest coverage completely. Um, they told me that they felt like um, I violated the guidelines. They said, no, she violated the, the po policy. I said, there's no policy. What, what did she violate? They still couldn't answer. Santiago is a Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist. He says he was taken off covering protests after he publicly supported Johnson. The Post Gazette says the two journalists were not removed because they are black, but the paper admitted to some missteps in communication. The paper says there is a need for fairness and truth, and they will hold their employees to that standard. The task force looking for violent protesters has come up with another picture. They say this man, whose picture's on your screen, injured a police officer. It was at the protest on Saturday, May 30th in downtown Pittsburgh. Police say that he was spotted on camera throwing concrete and rocks at police, and one of them gave an officer a concussion. We showed you these pictures yesterday of another man investigators are looking for. He is accused of throwing a cinder block through the window of a tactical operations support truck. And we just learned that two people were inside at that time. Police have arrested this man. They say that Shahid Hatch set fire to an unmarked police car outside of PPG Paints. You can see here he has on a Pittsburgh public safety vest and he's carrying a stop sign. Police say he stole all of those and posed for pictures. Investigators used Instagram to track him down. They say that he was caught on video wearing the stolen vest and dancing around the police car. <laughs> A crowd cheered in Louisville last night after city council voted to ban no-knock search warrants. The ordinance is called Brianna's Law. It's in honor of Brianna Taylor. She's the 26-year-old paramedic who was killed by police in Louisville after officers forced their way into her home. Brianna's Law also regulates how search warrants are carried out, requires the use of body cameras during searches, and requires all recorded data to be saved for five years. Brianna... That's all she wanted to do was save lives. So with this law, she'll get to continue to do that. Protesters say the law is a step in the right direction, but they still want the officers involved in Brianna's death to be charged. And she is one of the people who will be remembered tomorrow in New Kensington. It's a peaceful protest that is planned. It starts at 2.30. Everyone will meet at City Hall, and there'll be a moment of silence at the start. According to our partners at the Trib, demonstrators will put a wreath at the memorial honoring Officer Brian Shaw. He was killed three years ago in the line of duty. New at noon, we just got new coronavirus numbers from the Allegheny County Health Department. There are no new additional deaths since yesterday's report. But there are 10 new cases, and just one patient has been hospitalized. Today is the day that a lot of people in Beaver County have been waiting for. They are officially in the green phase. So that means that restaurants can reopen indoor dining at half capacity, and barbershops and hair salons can reopen too. Now, they do have to follow CDC guidelines. If you have any questions still about what is allowed in the green phase, we have a guide for you on WPXI.com. And Beaver County joins now 11 other counties entering the green phase today in our area. Statewide, there are now 46 counties in the green, and in the yellow, there are 21 counties and none in the red. There is a major concern this afternoon, though, as nearly half of the country is now seeing a new wave of coronavirus cases, and it has a lot of areas reevaluating their reopening plans. NBC's Tom Costello has the latest on the spike and the rush to find a vaccine and a treatment. Music City is pressing the pause button this morning with Nashville's mayor announcing they'll delay a move to phase three of reopening following a cluster of new coronavirus cases over the past couple of weeks. So we will continue, hopefully just a little bit longer, 
with phase two while carefully observing our public health data every day. Nationwide, 14 states have reported a 25% increase in COVID cases, including a 93% spike for Arizona in just the past week. Some of that due to new testing. California's governor says his state, which has seen daily numbers increase since Memorial Day, has leveled off in the past couple of weeks and will move forward. This morning, gyms, museums, campgrounds, and hotels will be allowed to reopen in L.A. County. Places like nail salons, movie theaters, concert halls, and theme parks will remain closed. As several companies race to develop a vaccine, Moderna says it'll enter a final testing phase next month, earlier than planned. Phase three trials also planned this summer for Johnson & Johnson and Oxford University vaccine candidates. Meanwhile, others are focused on therapeutics and antibody treatments like Regeneron, now testing its drug on humans. We're going to give people the actual antibodies when we give you these antibodies, if you haven't been infected, it should block you from getting infected. And at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, what's believed to be the first of its kind in the country. Surgeons performing a double lung transplant to save a woman in her 20s. Her lungs decimated by the virus, seen on the right, compared to healthy lungs on the left. A drastic life-saving intervention with hopes of a full recovery. Yesterday, she smiled and told me just one sentence. She said, Doc, thank you for not giving up on me. Doctors say it can take months or even years for somebody with a severe case of COVID-19 to fully recover, for their lungs to fully recover. Only a small percentage of people who have severe COVID would actually ever need a lung transplant. I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. Thanks, Tom. A Pennsylvania officer put on desk duty after a video showing him kicking a protester. But some say that's not enough. The new demand they have for the city. They'll grab a drink and then they'll walk down the street. Letting people drink out in the open. How it could help struggling businesses in a part of Westmoreland County. Plus, what a local official said about Pennsylvania's health secretary that has people calling for his resignation. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now. Channel 11 Morning News brings you weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Let me get you prepared for the week. Now we've expanded our weather to help you prepare for the day ahead. Definitely the heavy rain gear today. Morning Watch news. Channel 11 Morning News. We're on from 4.30 to 7 a.m. Pittsburgh's Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper tracking the weather in your neighborhood. People in Scott Township are calling for a commissioner to resign. He made comments about the Secretary of Health during a virtual meeting this week.
I'm tired of listening to a guy dressed up like a woman. I can't watch it. I know, I know how frustrated people are. You could hear one of those commissioners there gasp. So uh, this was after Commissioner Paul Abel made the remark there during that meeting. Dr. Rachel Levine is transgender and has led Governor Wolf's COVID-19 response for our state. Now, the commissioner sent us a statement saying, Commissioner Abel's opinions and views are not those of ours. Our biggest mistake was not addressing Commissioner Abel's statement when it happened, but we were too stunned immediately to respond. For that, we apologize. There's now a petition demanding that a police officer in Erie uh, be fired after he was seen kicking a woman during a riot. The video is tough to watch, but here it is. Uh, the woman in this video, she filed a complaint with the city, and that officer was put on desk duty. But organizers of a change.org petition say that's not enough. They say the officer should have been fired as soon as the video surfaced. Almost 12,000 people have now signed this petition. Erie police are investigating, and the mayor plans to release more information soon. I think it's kind of fun, and I think that, you know, if we all use common sense, then we can, you know, we'll be able to continue on with this. We have some new details on a plan to get Greensburg restaurants back to business. The city is relaxing, relaxing its open container rules, allowing people to drink on some sidewalks and parking lots. Jen 11's Melanie Gillespie shows us how this could help struggling businesses. Well, this is what your next night out in Greensburg could look like. The city issued a proclamation loosening restrictions on sidewalk seating and open containers, all to help stimulate the economy here. The tables and chairs are already standing on the sidewalk outside of Sun Dog Cafe in Greensburg. Owner Rachel Flowers says the city's decision to loosen restrictions on sidewalk seating and open containers is a welcome one. Takeout in, you know, is still a pretty good part of our business, um, whereas it wasn't before, but now it is, so it's a, it's a little extra icing on the cake. But then when you add the able to, you know, take a drink or something, you know, it just adds a little bit to your check average, and people are really excited about it. The suspension of the regulations and restrictions gives local businesses a chance to bounce back post pandemic. Flower says her business was down about 50 to 70 percent while her restaurant was forced to remain closed. But the extra seating is more forgiving when it comes to social distancing and CDC guidelines. We extended our seating on the outside so we seat up to an extra 20 people outside so then we really only lost about 10 seats on the inside. The proclamation is only temporary and businesses have to call the city to request an area to be cordoned off. But Flower says she hopes this sticks around rather than trying to almost even look at it as something that we were just trying to accommodate for you know the COVID-19 um, you know guidelines and restrictions and whatnot it actually opened us up to like something new that will probably continue throughout the future and the city reiterated that those open container policies are only allowed in the designated areas outside of that they say alcohol related offenses will still be enforced reporting in Greensburg I'm Melanie Gillespie for Channel 11 News YMCA's in our area are getting back to business after being closed for three months. The Y in Greensburg held a soft opening yesterday with limited hours. Today they're having a senior citizen preview and the YMCA will extend its hours on Monday and operate at half capacity. And today four branches of the Greater Pittsburgh YMCA reopened. You can now go to the ones in Wexford, Plum, Bethel Park and the Hill District. The rest of them will reopen once the Y sees how, these, how everything goes at these ones. Power is mostly restored after a tornado did in fact rip through parts of Beaver County. We told you yesterday during the noon show that the National Weather Service confirmed an EF2 tornado. Winds got up to 100 miles per hour. The people are still cleaning up in places like Ohioville and Dougherty Township. We found tree limbs and branches everywhere. We had the French all block uh, knocked over down in, in the back, and uh, it bent our, our vinyl fence there. It ruined it all three. It took it right out of the ground. It's been 35 years since a tornado that strong was reported in Beaver County. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Good afternoon. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Allison. Beautiful weather this afternoon. Cooler into the weekend, so we stay dry today, but we do have a chance to see a few showers around in some spots this weekend. And most of the weekend will be dry, but there's a chance. And those are going to come early Saturday morning. We'll have a chance to see a few showers around in the morning. An isolated shower cannot be rolled out Saturday afternoon. So if you want to cut the grass or get outside and enjoy the yard, this afternoon is going to be fantastic into the evening and also Sunday. Most of the day on Sunday will be fine. There's a chance to see a few showers back in the forecast south of I-70. 
Sunday evening. And I'll pinpoint those locations here and show you coming up on Storm Tracker. Look out of the PennDOT cam. Look at those beautiful blue skies. Another pretty much picture perfect day. And it's going to feel very comfortable. So, as I mentioned, if you want to get outside and do that yard work this afternoon and this evening, fantastic conditions for that. Look at this. The forecast as we head into the afternoon hours, upper 70s, near 80 degrees. So, beautiful breeze at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So, it's going to be warm, uh, but it's going to be that nice light breeze with the dew points on the low side is just going to be fantastic. So burn time pretty quick today, about 15 to 20 minutes. And if you're going to spend an extended period of time outside, you want to make sure you have that sunscreen on and uh, be sun, have that sun safety uh, things in mind. So sunglasses, hat, you know, try to be mindful of that today. And it gets a little bit better into the weekend, but still, you want to always be safe in the sun. 79 degrees is your high today, mostly sunny skies. Very seasonable today. It turns cooler over the weekend. Some of us are going to struggle to even get to the 70 degree mark. So this afternoon, six, 76 there in Beaver, 79 in Pittsburgh. And then overnight tonight, we're going to drop below the 60s and get very comfortable into the lower 50s tonight. So that's going to happen pretty quickly once the sun goes down. So this evening, still 75 at 7 o'clock when the sun is out. But once the sun goes down, we'll have clear skies for a while. So as you can see here on Storm Tracker, clear skies this afternoon and this evening. So once the sun goes down after midnight is when we're really going to start to see cloud cover kind of move back in. And this is where we do have a chance to see a few showers break out into early morning and to your early morning hours tomorrow. So 5, 5.30 some showers move across us. So 52 overnight, a cooler night, a beautiful night. But the coolest night of the next couple will be tomorrow night. As temperatures will get to about 50 degrees and some of us may even fall to the upper 40s. So increasing clouds past midnight. This weekend will mostly be dry, but there is a chance to see a few showers. As I just mentioned, tomorrow morning starting at about 4, 4.30 to about 9, 10 o'clock, there's going to be a few showers around in our forecast. So if you're one of those people that like to get up and get out the door early in the morning for that jog or for that run, you may need to dodge a few showers in the morning. Most of the day tomorrow dry, straight shower in the afternoon. So your forecast early tomorrow morning in the 50s. So that's going to be lovely. But we are going to look at that rain chance in the morning. And then most of the weekend, as I mentioned, dry, but we do have another chance to see some showers around Sunday evening. I'll pinpoint those locations, the timing, more details here coming up in the next half hour. Back to you. Thanks so much. Everyone wants to support local restaurants, but what are local restaurants doing to support you? The steps that they're taking to keep customers safe. Plus a controversy at WVU. What was seen during a video conference on diversity that has the police chief apologizing? minutes Scott and Trisha are going to tell you how to start your day. You can get a lot of things on your phone when it comes to the weather, but you can't get Scott's expertise. He's trying to narrow in on your neighborhood to let you know what you could expect. You're going to know what to wear. You're going to know what the kids need to wear. We call Trisha Pittman our expert for good reason. You ask Trisha where is the closure. She knows it and three ways around it. She's been doing this longer than anybody else. She has a direct pipeline to PennDOT. They're the best in the city. You're prepared every 10 minutes, every day.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Welcome back. The police chief at WVU is apologizing for what was seen during a Zoom meeting. So there is a thin blue line flag behind the chief during this meeting on diversity and inclusion. And he said in a statement he understands the flag represents something that is traumatic to some, and he didn't mean to suggest police lives matter more than black lives. He said he'll take down the flag. The thin blue line flag was created as a way to pay tribute to police officers killed in the line of duty. This afternoon, there are calls to cancel the kids' show Paw Patrol. Someone posted on social media that it's brainwashing kids into thinking law enforcement is noble and a just profession. If you don't have kids, maybe you haven't heard about it, but it's a show with eight puppies who help on rescue missions. Criticism grew after the show posted a tweet showing their police canine. It's in the picture here. That's Chase. The post said that the show was muting its content to give access for black voices to be heard. Nickelodeon has not yet commented on the controversy. Microsoft is the latest company to refuse to sell facial recognition technology to police until they say federal regulations are in place. IBM and Amazon also announced similar plans earlier this week. Last year, a federal study showed facial recognition software frequently misidentified minorities and people of color. Microsoft says legislation on facial recognition should be grounded in human rights. The company will stop giving police the technology for a year. We are now in the green phase, but that doesn't mean we're all back to normal. The advice local restaurants are getting to put customers at ease in the wake of the coronavirus. Plus, the new plan to create digital money to help people get their stimulus checks. And Brighton Rehab was hit with thousands of dollars in fines over COVID-19. What investigators say the nursing home failed to do that put lives in danger. WPXI now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. find anything else like the breaking news desk in Pittsburgh. You're going to get breaking news as it's happening. We have an anchor now dedicated to following the latest information as it comes in. That is a resource no one else has. If you see me on the breaking news desk, you know it's an important story. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Allegheny County. 
Breaking right now, the state health department just released its daily coronavirus update. Let's take a look here together. There are almost 700 new cases in Pennsylvania, bringing the state's total to almost 78,000 cases since the pandemic began. Here at home in our area, Beaver and Butler counties both have one new case. There are two more cases in Washington County and nine in Westmoreland County. And just want to let you know, because of the way that the, the change in the way that the state is reporting data, Fayette County now has one fewer case. Brighton Rehab in Beaver County is facing more than $62,000 in fines. It's related to how it handled the pandemic. According to the TRIB, a federal investigation found that PPE was not worn properly, medical equipment was not cleaned right, and there were issues with medical records. As of Wednesday, at least 80 Brighton residents have died from COVID-19. The investigation into Brighton is not over. Federal officials say the facility could be hit with more fines depending on what they find. Being quarantined certainly can be isolating, especially for seniors. So some estimates actually show the number of people who feel that way is now tripled. Yesterday, health experts gave lawmakers suggestions on how to combat loneliness, specifically for elderly folks, things like Zoom counseling and exercise classes. They explained that this can't be done without reducing the technology barrier. It's essentially IT support for elders to learn how to use the technology effectively. In addition to providing the technology and providing the services via technology, all three of those elements have to be present. The health experts also warned the committee of more scams targeting the elderly. Millions of Americans still haven't gotten their stimulus money. In most cases, it's because they don't have bank accounts. So lawmakers are looking at digital money. Think of it like a digital dollar. The money would be recognized on smartphones. It would give you almost instant access to things like stimulus payments or other financial assistance. Experts say this could help people avoid paying fees to check cashing businesses because they don't have bank accounts. It would also help people who have limited access to actually going to a physical bank branch. Now, this is still in the discussion phase. Lawmakers say if the U.S backs a digital currency, there needs to be transparency in how it's handled. So we are now about a week into the green phase for most counties and restaurants and bars are still trying to woo customers back. Channel 11's Angie Moreski found out what they're doing to make customers feel comfortable. One of the things so many of us have looked forward to in the green phase is eating out again. But a lot of folks are still wary about going back into restaurants and bars. So today, players in the food industry held a webinar to share guidance on the new rules and how to help diners feel safe. How you doing, folks? As restaurants and bars work to convince consumers it's okay to come back out, health and well-being are top concerns. Safety, safety, safety. Safety of your employees, safety of your customers. That means following rules on how and when to clean outlined by the Allegheny County Health Department in today's webinar. Restrooms definitely um, need to be cleaned at least once per hour. Also, restaurants must implement strict guidelines for employee hygiene and wellness. Hand washing has, is always, you know, a top priority, but now we, we need to increase that. Um, definitely want to restrict sick employees from from the facility. It's recommended all restaurants display their rules when it comes to requirements for social distancing, traffic flow, and face masks to help avoid any customer confusion. There's two things we're dealing with right now. One is complying with government guidelines designed to help people safe, keep people safe, and secondly, con convincing consumers it's okay to come back out. Restaurants that fail to follow state and county guidelines do risk disciplinary action up to and including having their license suspended. So they are taking this very seriously. We'll have a link for you on our app and website with all the guidelines. Angie Moreski, Channel 11 News. Low humidity today. You'll feel it when you step outside and a cooler weekend than what we've been seeing. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Stephanie Allison tells us how long this picture perfect weather will last. Good afternoon, Jennifer. Fantastic weather outside right now. Plenty of sunshine. That's going to continue this afternoon. Look at the breeze out of the tower cam. The winds are sustained at about 14 miles per hour. So we have this nice warm air in the forecast. Dew points are low and then the breeze on top of it really just a perfect afternoon and that's going to continue into the evening. Look at these dew points drop through the afternoon hours. So we are going to see things really turn comfortable for us, especially as we head into the evening tonight. So we're a little bit warmer right now, believe it or not, but we are going to continue to see that warmer in the forecast today. Things change though this weekend. Temperatures will even struggle to get to the 70s in some spots here this weekend. So this afternoon our average high is 78. We're going to get to 79 degrees today. A look at that weekend forecast that's coming up in the next 15 minutes.
there's kind of a petri dish of ignorance I would like to say that they kind of are uncomplicent with and I hope that you know this movement kind of you know opens their eyes and, and sparks change he says he saw a video and he says that it was from his fellow students and it promoted racism and ignorance. In it, a group of white students sang a racial slur in a song over and over. So just days after graduating from Fox Chapel High School, William Jenner at the third brought his community together to have a critical conversation. Dozens of families packed the pavilion at Squaw Valley Park in Fox Chapel last night. They were there to show support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Mothers and fathers sat with their children to listen, to learn, and to demand change for a more inclusive community. Black history matters. Black teachers matter. Actively fighting racism in our school community matters. I think it's important for a predominantly white suburb to show our support of our black neighbors. Jenneretta is going off to college in the fall, but says schools need to do a better job of being more inclusive. He says that at Fox Chapel, he never had a black history lesson or a black teacher. Now to Decision 2020 coverage. At least part of the summer's Republican National Convention will be held in Jacksonville, Florida. It was originally set for Charlotte, but the governor of North Carolina wouldn't allow the convention center to be filled to capacity because of social distancing. So the Republican Party already signed a contract, so delegates will vote in Charlotte, but the president will make his speech in Florida. Calls are growing in, in D.C. to send money to cities and counties to make sure that the November election runs smoothly. We have seen thousands of complaints across the country about Americans running into problems at the polls. There have been long lines and voting machines that haven't worked. To put, put it bluntly, this was one of the most chaotic elections that we have seen this season. Unfortunately, we really didn't have any major issues at the polls last week. But Westmoreland County did need an extra 24 hours to count all the mail-in ballots. Summer is basically here, but is it safe to go on vacation during a pandemic? What doctors say you need to do on your way and when you get to your destination. You put on Channel 11 Morning News, there is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop, we don't stop. I know you have a busy morning. I'm a mom too, and you're doing a thousand different things. We want to make sure you know everything you need to know to get prepared for your day as you head out the door. You're going to get weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Jennifer is going to tell you the breaking news as it's happening. We're not repeating the same stories over and over. We're digging for those new details. You can be assured that you're going to get all the information you need before you head out the door. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Butler County. 
Welcome back. You might be planning your summer vacation now that the kids are done with school. But in the new normal of COVID-19, is it safe to travel? NBC's Wendy Wolfolk has some answers. A very different summer travel season is here during a global pandemic. The safety of travel is really dependent on where you're going and where you're coming from. According to a recent survey from the personal finance website Value Penguin, 61% of respondents said they plan to visit family or friends once travel restrictions are lifted. We have our masks, we have our hand sanitizer, we're just ready to go. Trisha Montz flew from Cleveland to Los Angeles with her family and is driving back home cross country in an RV. Isolation and keeping up with social distancing, even when you're on vacation, is still going to be important. Every traveler should stay up to date on the number of COVID cases, both at home and their vacation destination. No matter whether traveling by plane, train, or bus, passengers should wear masks and wipe down their seats. Wiping down, disinfecting commonly touched surfaces, uh, tray tables, seats, uh, armrests, those types of things where people are constantly. Uh, touching them. Same advice goes once you reach your final destination, whether hotel or rental. Wipe down commonly used surfaces. And what about where to stop if you decide to take a road trip? Biggest thing is, is going to an area where there's, it's not crowded, uh, where there's not a lot of people packed in together. Most importantly, continue health and safety measures we've learned while staying at home so you can stay safe when you travel as well. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News. Social distancing on school buses might be hard to do. A district's plan to get students to school safely. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on. The seven-day forecast, now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. Schools are figuring out how to safely have class in the age of COVID-19. And a district in Westmoreland County might want to start encouraging carpooling. It's part of a plan to limit the number of students taking the bus in the Hemfield Area School District. So in the past, only siblings were allowed to drive to school together. Other options would be to waive the driving fees and encourage parents to drop off their kids.
We have a date. The NHL and the Players Union gave the go-ahead for teams to start training camp on July 10th. Camps are expected to last for at least two weeks before any games are scheduled. This is the third phase of the NHL's plan to return to play and wrap up the season. 24 teams are still in the running and none have played since the season was stopped in March. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Stephanie Allison. Beautiful weather this afternoon. We stay dry and it's also going to be on the warm side, upper 70s. Cooler this weekend, changes are coming. We're going to have a little more cloud cover back with us and a chance to see a few showers around at some points this weekend for some of us. Some of us are going to stay dry. So let's talk about what's going on outside right now. Beautiful conditions out of the tower cam. The sun is shining, the breeze, you can see the trees there. We're going to continue to see this breeze at about 10 to 15 miles per hour this afternoon. And look at the blue skies there on the PennDOT cam in Carnegie. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. It was gorgeous yesterday afternoon. We are going to have the same sky conditions again today. So if you want to get outside and mow the lawn, you can do that today, this evening. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a chance to see some showers, and that's going to come early Saturday morning for some. So if you have plans on cutting the grass tomorrow, maybe damp early on, there's a chance to see an isolated shower around again in the afternoon. Most of Sunday should be dry. There will be a chance to see some showers by Sunday evening. And then, of course, again on Monday, a few isolated showers as well. So as I mentioned, most of the weekend will be dry, but today, dry with plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Upper 70s, look at those marks this afternoon. 3 o'clock, 78 degrees, 79 will be the high today. Wind speeds through the afternoon hours at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then once the sun goes down... The breeze goes down. The clouds still will be out of our forecast for a little while before we start to see increasing cloud cover. So temperatures will drop pretty quickly here tonight. Pollen forecast is high. Trees and grass, that may be an issue for you. Just plan for that. And also the UV index forecast is high today as well. Burn time, 15 to 20 minutes. 79 is your high today. Mostly sunny sky. Beautiful conditions. 76 in Beaver, 78 in Greensburg, 79 in Uniontown. And as I mentioned, once that sun goes down tonight, temperatures will fall. So 63 quickly at 10 o'clock. And later on this evening, we will get to about 52 overnight tonight. So cooler tonight. Cooler uh, tomorrow night is going to be the coolest night on Saturday night. As temperatures will fall to about 50 degrees. And some of us... We'll even make it to the upper 40s. Once we hit midnight, 1 o'clock, we'll start to see some increasing clouds in our forecast and see chance of a few stray showers late tonight, 3, 4 in the morning. But really, we're going to see some light rain showers across us for some tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And I'm going to show you that here coming up. So temperatures overnight, 50 in in Beaver tonight, 53 in Pittsburgh, 50 also in Washington. Look at this. Storm Tracker shows you 4 a.m. Some light rain showers getting into our forecast area starting in our northwestern counties, dropping across us in the morning, so 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Whatever falls here will be very light. Light rain showers out there. Spotty left over at 9 a.m. what's left over and just some cloud cover at that point. Not a lot of precipitation in the forecast tomorrow morning. Sunshine mixes in in the afternoon. Can't roll out a stray shower once that passes. But overall, beautiful conditions tomorrow. Mix of sun and clouds there. Temperature is much cooler uh, in the forecast over the weekend. The pick of the weekend is Sunday. We'll have a high near 71 degrees with a chance of a few showers south of I-70 late Sunday evening. Right, Stephanie, thank you so much. It seems a lot of people wish that they could keep working from home, but it does have its downsides, how it could be hurting your wallet. And now here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Hey, Lisa Robertson here. And one of the things that I think has become just part of our everyday lives now, and I think it's going to be for a while, is masks, right? Didn't even think of that before. Now, the minute you're going anywhere, wait, do I have a mask? You're going to see anyone, do I have a mask? When you go to the grocery store, do I have a mask? I'm going to go see friends, do I have a mask? Whatever it happens to be, we're going to be wearing these for a while. And I think one of the things that can be frustrating is, where do I get them? I need different masks for different, you know, different types of when I'm where I'm wearing them, when I'm wearing them. I don't want to have to wait two months to get one in the mail, right? This is something where local steals and deals said we can help you out. And we wanted to make it as easy as possible. So we have an amazing collection of masks and they're all different types. And look how fun these are. I like this one. Um, this is one of our boy meets girl masks and you can put filters in them and they're all different fun fabrics and they're machine washable and super soft. I can just put this in my pocket and it's with me anywhere, right? So sometimes that's what you want or maybe that's what your kids will wear or your parents will wear or your friends will wear, right? 
always good to have masks for everybody. But then sometimes you're saying, I want something that's gonna be disposable and have more filtration. This is the KN95 mask. You probably heard a lot about these. This is another great idea. This has the thing right here for the nose, so it fits really well. Again, over the ears, these are gonna give a higher filtration and these are disposable. These are just a couple great ideas. Journey well, they have some really cool designs in masks, right? One of the things we wanted to do was to make it easy for you to have whatever type of mask you need and to have a lot of masks because you need them in different places and you wanna get them for different people in your lives. And it's not just for us. Whenever we're wearing a mask, I know I feel like I'm being responsible and protecting myself, but I'm also doing it for the people around me. And I think that's important too. Let's all participate in being helpful to ourselves, being helpful to our neighbors and our friends, and making sure that we're all wearing masks when we're in places where we should be. Now you have a great supply. We'll get it to you quickly. Lots of different options, and it's all on localsteals.com. In Severe Weather Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and rain is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live. Make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. As people head back to the office, a new survey shows a lot of them want to keep working from home. Creditcards.com found 35% of employees who are working from home would like to do it full time. And more than 80% say they'd like to be at home at least two days a week. But the report also found those working from home saw an increase in grocery and utility bills. Would you feel more comfortable wearing a mask when you go to work out? How about one of these new ones from Under Armour? It's a reusable mask that is water resistant and designed to be easy to breathe in. That's important if you're out there for a run. It made one of, it's made of three layers. One of them is a type of fabric that Under Armour says has been shown to destroy COVID-19 in laboratory tests. It wasn't quite the welcome home that a Florida family expected. They returned to find an alligator swimming in their pool, and of course they recorded it, right? So let's watch this together here. You can see that gator looks like he's doing laps, kind of looks like he owns the place, huh? The family stayed inside, taped this, and well, hope the gator would find its way out. And when we came back outside, he wasn't here any longer. He was outside in the yard under the hammock. And uh, so that, that time we tried to grab him and turned to a bit of a fiasco out here trying to grab him. Oh, my gosh. 
There he is. He needed a break after that. He wanted to go by the hammock, right? He was tired after swimming, swimming laps in the pool there. Eventually, the family did get the big gator into a garbage bin, and they took it to a local pond, and they say they're just glad it was small enough that they could try to wrangle it themselves. All right, thanks so much for being with us here this afternoon. Our next newscast is coming up tonight at 5. You can get breaking news anytime by our streaming apps. Just search for WPXI on Apple, Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Have a good one. Morning News is committed to covering the reopening of our area, bringing you what's happening now. They just flashed the open sign to welcome all customers back in. What's new? Big announcement for parents. It is safe for your kids to go back to school. Protests involving hundreds of people in our area won't impact the green phase. And what's next with experts weighing in? Eight out of ten people say they really want to get behind small businesses. Here's a